Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Lori, the PhD Antiques Appraiser. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. My guests are here. Everything's unscripted. Let's get started. If you have a poor connection, if you do not have the lights on, if you have some other kind of issue, I'm not going to be able to help you and um, have you participate. So please, if you're waiting backstage in the green room, would you please turn on some lights? And make sure that your cameras are horizontal because if it looks like snow in the old TV sets, I'm not going to have you on. Okay, let's see what you've got. Hold up those objects. Cameras should be horizontal. If they're not, you've got to make them horizontal. There we go. Let's see. Let's start with those lanterns. Hi, what's your name? Uh, April. Hey, April, where are you calling from, hon? Uh, Missouri. Nice to see you. What have you got? I have two um, side lamps from my, uh, it's 1913 Ford Model T. Good for you. So you did some research and you know that they're from a 1913 Ford Model T car. They're cool. Yeah. They're real. They're really cool. And accessories for vintage or classic cars is how they're called. Any car that of course, 25 years old or more is a classic car. Antique cars have to be a hundred years old, like all antiques. How'd you acquire these? They were in a box that was headed for donated. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So a box that was headed for donating like from your home or your family home? No, someone my husband was doing work for. Okay. And so she was like, you can take these boxes if you want. So. So he did. <laughs> well, good for him. That was, that was smart. That was smart. So you got them for free for zero, right? Yes. And you did some checking, right? And you're saying, I can't believe they're worth this much, right? Right. <laughs> Yeah. So you want to confirm it. They're $500 a piece. Are you kidding? That's a thousand bucks. I never kid because I don't have a dog in the hunt. I don't care. I care about you succeeding and learning it based on actual sales records, right? They're in very good condition and people look for these. This goes along with many categories. And I always tell you, what do you look for? On these particular types of pieces, I want you to look for the original glass. I want you to look for all of the original pieces. If, they, if you actually also have the mounts, they increase value. But in fact, what you have that's beautiful is you have the pair, always keep sets intact. And of course you have uh, the original reflectors and the original glass. Congratulations, I think that's great. <laughs> I think you. that's great. Congratulations to you. Hey, I always have a question of the day, April. Today, of course, it's cranberry sauce. Do you like your cranberry sauce or jellied? Uh, sauce. Sauce, sauce. Okay, nice to see you. Thanks for being with me. You take care. Thank you. You too. Congratulations. Yeah. So somebody says you can take that box of stuff. You know what? It's a good idea to take the box of stuff, right? Sometimes the pieces just come to you for free. So that's great. That's great. So I want to make sure that you realize all this is unscripted. I don't know what's coming. What fun. My guests are here from all over the world. And I'm glad that you're here with me too. I'm always going to show you what to look for so you have an understanding of what to look for in any art antique or collectible, whatever it might be. So let's see. What have we got? What have we got? I don't like any of these three objects. <laughs> I'm not compressed with any of these. I can't see that one very well. Let's see if we've got some other objects to choose from. That one I'm not crazy about. Let's go with the earrings. <laughs> Now, I'll tell you why I don't like those other three objects. You're all going, gosh, she doesn't like my object. Isn't she picky? Yes. First of all, couldn't see some of them because lights aren't on or the connection is too slow and I can't see a good image. So I got to see a good image. And then some of the other ones we've seen before, I want to teach you new things. Hi, Dr. Lori here. What's your name? Hello, I'm Mel. Hi, Mel. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. How'd you acquire these? I got them at a thrift store. And where are you from, Mel? I'm in Corvallis, Oregon. So tell me a little bit about yourself, Mel, because you've been on before. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, well, I don't know. I, I, gosh, there's so much to say. Well, I'll say music. something. You've got a beautiful, you've got a beautiful image behind you, of course, yeah. of a very famous Japanese woodblock mm -hmm. print called the Great Wave, basically. Yes. It's a beautiful piece. So that one has been expanded. What do you normally do when you're not thrifting or are you a full-time thrifter? I love thrifting. I absolutely love decorating um, rooms and making things beautiful for Good. very cheap. Uh, but I also play music. I read a lot and, and write in notebooks. So Do you I write music too? Well. Do you write yeah. music too? Because yeah, I, I, can't, I can't read music. I don't know how to read music. So yeah. I'm always impressed with people who can read, read and write music. I have friends in Nashville who, who are trying to teach me, but yeah. they're real musicians. Yeah. Right? 
do it. I lived and in Nashville for four years before yeah, I moved see? I like to know more about you guys because sometimes the faces become familiar. Well, it's nice to see mm -hmm. you from Oregon. How did you acquire these? How much did you pay for the earrings? I found them at a thrift store for $3. Okay. And what are, what's characteristic about them? They look like they're lever backs. What's a lever back? It basically works like a lever, right? It's not a screw back where it screws into the back of the lobe of your ear. It's a lever back. It goes click, click, click like that. And it's not a clip-on. A clip-on has a larger clip in the back. Are okay. they two-tone metal or are they just silver? This I don't like know. The reason I bought them is because they're marked Trafari. And I've been okay. watching you and I recognize the name. So I'm closer. Sure. Well, that's what I want you to look for. So yeah. you looked for the mark, you found the mark. Yeah, so they're two-tone metal. What does that mm -hmm. mean? They're frosted silver, not sterling silver, but they're frost. Don't turn them, don't turn them, don't do that. <laughs> don't drive me crazy tonight. <laughs> so, okay, so you've got two-tone metal, right? And it looks like they're frosted with the silver portion for the leaves and then the gold portion of the veins of the leaves. I guess it's mm -hmm. called a vein of a leaf. I don't know. You arborists mm -hmm. have to tell me if that's the right term. So that's basically what you're looking at here. Um, because they're Trafari, they date probably to the early 1960s. 1950s Trafari sort of looks like this, but I think these are a little bit later. And I'll talk a little bit about the decades of Trafari in another video. That's what you're basically looking at. So value on these, I would say $45 for the pair, as long as the levers work, because the mm -hmm. levers can be a little bit hard. Sometimes you have to do a little WD-40 or kind of like get in there and kind of move them a little bit. If they're not hard and they click right on, then I would say $45 for the pair with Trafari, with the Trafari mark. Yeah. Does the mark on Trafari have a crown on top of the T? Yes, yeah. Excellent. So it's crown Trafari, which is a little bit different than the later mm -hmm. Trafari. Good for you. How much did you pay $3 at the thrift store? Yeah. For $45? Excellent, Mel. Good for you. Yay. Yay. So um, cranberry, do you like it sauce or do you like the jelly? Comes out of the can, it's like jelly and you cut it. Yeah, definitely sauce. Definitely sauce. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> nice to see you, honey. Me too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, Japanese woodblock print in the back too. She had it on a on textile. It's been blown up, obviously, but a very, very famous image relating to sort of the the turmoil that is the late 19th century in Japan. That's a great image too. So she likes to decorate, and that's really cool. Yeah, the Curse of Oak Island. Oh yes, I've enjoyed myself and always do when I participate in History Channel's treasure hunt, the longest running treasure hunt on record. I help them appraise objects and identify them often on the Curse of Oak Island. So thanks for watching. It's a lot of fun. Thanks for being here too. And uh, oh, let's see what Linda has to say. I tried getting on your site the other day and you were there, but all these other appraisers were there as well. Couldn't get to me exclusively. What are you doing wrong? You're not on my site. I don't work with other appraisers at a site. I don't know where you were. So where do you go if you're trying to get to me? here on this channel, right here with the videos on YouTube or drlorev.com. Nowhere else will I be with other people doing appraisers. So you thought I was there. I wasn't there. I'm sure of it. I know where I was. I wasn't there. I'm sorry that you got confused, but it's not difficult. Although there are a lot of people who will get confused and think they have me when they don't. The only place you're going to get me, the only place, drlorev.com. I'm here to help you. So uh, thanks for that. A little uh, odd, but all right. Subscribe to the newsletter. Don't forget about the newsletter because that's where you're going to get my information too. You're going to get great information, information that you can use so you can correctly identify valuable objects and go from there. So um, make sure that you check out the newsletter. It's really easy to do. Go to drlorev.com, click on the thumbs up free, and it is free to get my newsletter. Give us your email address, and then when we send out the email, newsletter, you'll get it via email. Okay. Let's see what we've got with this piece of glass. How about some sort of green teal glass? It looks like. Hi, Hello, Dr. Are Lori. You? How are you, hon? Doing well. That's good. What's your name? Megan. Hey, Megan, where are you in the world? In Virginia. In Virginia. You know, somebody, I like Virginia. Somebody was saying, you know, before we got started, oh, you know, Dr. Lori gets mad. So I, I get afraid and I don't want to go on. Are you afraid of me, for, uh, Megan? It was me. That was, it was me that said it. I'm sorry we picked you, Megan. <laughs> it was me and my salt cellar. 
Yeah, your salt cellar. So yeah. basically, how did you acquire this piece? I don't know why you would be afraid of me. I've been helping people for 25 I know years. I know it. I know it. There's always the one. There, 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 there's Megan. always one. That, what that did you, you say, honey? Stop I, I didn't hear you. Like, I didn't hear you. I said, there's always one that gets you. And you're like, ma'am, stop twirling it. Do this. Do that. And I'm like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Well, I want all of you to be able to see it, right? Yes, ma'am. When you're, when you're twirling it, you're not doing it that, you're not doing anybody a help. I know everybody tries to show all sides, but we need to see it. My point with you is yes. I'm trying to help everybody and you're saying that you're afraid of me. So that makes me go, gee, I don't want oh, anybody to I'm be not afraid. afraid. No, ma'am. No, you're not afraid. Good. Because if you were afraid, why would you still be here? Because I love you. Oh, you love me now. Doesn't sound like you love me in that comment. Let me tell you, Megan. <laughs> How'd you acquire this piece? Same thrift store. Where are you calling from, honey? Woodbridge, Virginia. Woodbridge, Virginia. You said that. Okay. Yes. So this particular piece, what do you think it is? Um, I believe it's a cigar tray. Okay. And where do you think it was made? Uh, Italy. Are you sure about that? Nah. Okay. So you just said Italy because most of the glass we see is Italian? Yeah. Okay. And with the bubbles and stuff. And the Are swirl. there a lot of knockoffs of Italian glass? Uh, There's probably a lot of knockoffs, a lot of of, Italian knockoffs glass. of Italian glass. So you got this at a thrift store, a yard sale, and estate sale? Correct. Okay. Which one? Uh, thrift store. Okay. How much did you pay? Uh, I want to say $1.99 maybe. What attracted you to it? Um, The bottom. Okay, so you liked the bottom. What did you like? The pontil, which is the blow rod that was, so you liked that it was sharp? Uh, yeah, I liked that it was sharp. I okay. liked that it was, um, I could tell that it was old. Um, it had been What's in the old? ground. What's old? The, uh, significantly old? older that, than. Um, Give me a year. Give me a year. What's more old? than 50 years. Definitely. More than 50 years old. Okay. Yeah. So and it had been 19, in the ground. 1970 or earlier. Maybe earlier. Okay. All right. It had How been much in the ground? Is from the fifties? Um, I'm not, I'm well, that's why I'm here, Dr. Lurie. You're the I expert. Know, I know, but you're gonna answer a couple questions now, Megan. Yeah. <laughs> so all right. So basically, I would say that that piece dates to the early 1970s. So okay. about 50 years, right? And I would say that that piece is Italian, but not Murano. And I would say that that piece has controlled bubbles and a nice swirl. What do you look for? You see that nice swirl that she's showing us here? Because she's not spinning the piece so everybody can see it. That nice swirl is something I like you to look for. I like you to look for controlled bubbles, right? I don't particularly like the shape, right? Even though you say, oh, well, it's for cigars. Yeah, it's an ashtray. So it could be cigars or cigarettes. Usually the larger element, if she holds it this way, thank you, doll. You can see that large scoop, it's not a small scoop. The large scoop means it's probably for cigars. And that's a help too. Value on that piece, about $65. And you said you paid about a buck. Okay, now I got a personal question. Does the nose ring thing hurt? Uh, not anymore, but it did initially. It hurt initially because you have to yeah. go right through, right? Yeah, it goes right through. Do you take it off and switch them out? Um, I used to, but... Oh. People That's do, but now you just do with that. Yeah, yeah, I don't bother I with it. You. I'm too old. Oh, question it needs to go day. anyway. Oh, you're not too old. You're never too old. Uh, cranberry sauce, jelly, or the sauce? Both. Oh, both. Interesting. Good to meet you. Never Thank be afraid. You. I'm a really nice person, and people say a lot of lousy things about me. So sometimes you got to say, gee, I want to hear it from the horse's mouth of what you're really thinking, because you know what? I'm trying to teach you what you can use information that all of you can use. Ah, sometimes life has made people fear in authority. I'm like that. You're afraid of authority, trying to be better with it, but it's from a past trauma. So it's not you, Dr. Lloyd. Well, I don't want anybody to feel uncomfortable. So if you feel uncomfortable, I don't want that. Nobody wants that. Cause Hey, you know, I've had times when I felt uncomfortable too. So authority, it's not really authority. It has to do with the fact that, you know, I spent years and years and years of trying to learn this. And now that I've learned it, I want to share it. I think that's a good reason to be on here and telling you what's what. I also know how to teach. I've taught for a long time. I want you folks to get it because you will hear my voice and it will help you. I know it. But don't be uncomfortable. That's not my goal at all. My guests are here. It's so fun to be here. Chris, thank you very much for uh, supporting the channel. I haven't seen much support of the channel on this particular one. 
of course, anything that you do to support the channel will be helpful, like Super Chats and Super Stickers. You have two Masonic pins that are marked 14K on the top. What does that mean, gold-plated? No, it actually means that it's 10 karat gold. And it's oftentimes with the Freemasons and much of their accessory pieces that they are gold, right? So they're 10 karat, right? That's a fineness mark as opposed to 14 karat or 18 karat or 24 karat. It in fact is a fineness mark. So oftentimes they are at least 10 karat gold. Um, I've appraised many Masonic pieces, everything from pocket watches to brooches to buttons, all different types, and we'll see that. Thank you very much for your support of the channel. It helps me to make more videos for all of you so I can teach all of you and also show you what to look for because that's one of the big reasons that a lot of you are saying, I follow Dr. Lori because she's shown me how to make money and know what to look for, and she showed me how to leave the junk in the places where I'm shopping, too. I also want you to build great collections for yourself, and I'll show you how to do that, too. You can also support the channel by purchasing our merchandise. I get a small compensation when you, of course, I get compensation when, of course, you purchase something like a t-shirt, like a tote bag, like the sweatshirts. You all said, I want sweatshirts, I want sweatshirts. So, um, like the sweatshirts, and you can, of course, purchase them, too. Uh, you can also um, do that, you know, as you need things, but it supports the channel and supports us making more videos for all of you. My guests are here. And of course, we're talking about art antiques and collectibles and what to look for. Uh, you just want the, Michael wants the information. He doesn't care what I am. So yeah, Mike is a smart guy. And really, I'm not mean, but okay, you're entitled to say whatever you want. You know, uh, this person, Sue, has been supporting the channel a lot, and I appreciate that. I don't care what the amount is. I care that you show the support in some way. So thank you for doing that. I appreciate that, and it helps me to make more videos for all of you. A lot of those videos, I'm seeing it that many of you are saying, oh, I'm re-watching them. I'm learning more. I'm watching the Ask Dr. Lori lives and learning more. Let's talk to my guests, though. <laughs> my guests are here. Hold up those objects. Let's see what you've got. Let's see what you've got. Okay, make sure you've got some light in the room. Sideways camera, if you could. I need more light in the room with the with the necklace. Not enough light at all. Not enough light at all. Need more light in the room. Let's see. All right. Let's see what this print looks like. Looks like a print of a. Now, now you got to help me because I'm lousy with animals. Is this a gorilla? Is this an orangutan? Is this a monkey? What is this? I believe it's a silverback gorilla. Thank you. A silverback gorilla. See, we're going to all learn something now, myself Excellent. included. I'm Dr. Lori. What's your name? I'm Kelly from Orange, Connecticut. Hi, Kelly. It's nice to see you. Nice Kelly to see is you. in a place not far from where I grew up, in fact. I realize this, yes. Yeah, I grew up in the Cheshire Hamden area. It's nice to see you. How'd you acquire this print? Well, I, I picked it up at a Goodwill. Nice. So is it signed at all? It is signed. It's signed, dated, and titled, and numbered, in fact. Okay. So who's it signed by? Well, that's a, a question. It's been driving me crazy. I can't okay. quite make it out. Okay, so a couple of tips of how you can make it out. First of all, when you look at a print like this, you know that it is a lithograph. Why? You can see the tonalities, the different basic tones of the gray, right? You can see that they're they're accentuating the silver back. It's a little bit of a different tone than the, than the arm of the animal, for example. Yes. You can notice the shadow is different. That's well done, too. Thank you, Lori, for the super sticker, too. And then also what I want you to see also is in that upper left hand corner where they start basically what does that mean where the lithographer has started to make that that change of depth in when they are carving into and greasing and inking the stone so that's an important element of the, the lithography this lithograph is pretty high quality no matter who paint who, no matter who did it mm -hmm. so that's what i like about it it's numbered uh tell me what the number is it would be a fraction it is four of 10. There so it is. There more. it is. That's what we want. You want a low denominator and a low numerator. So four, the numerator is low. 10 means there's only 10 in the whole print run. So these people are focusing, this artist is focusing on the quality of the print. I like that a lot. So you paid a couple bucks at the thrift store? Yes. This particular piece, we need to figure out the artist. If you don't know who the artist is, my suggestion that I give oftentimes, which is a very, very... A good way to figure out the artist, try to mimic with a pad and a pencil, a pencil, mm -hmm. an actual pad, try to mimic the actual strokes. You may be able to actually figure out what that name is if you mimic the strokes. 
We can't see, I can't see it here. You're not close enough to the camera for me to see it to help you. Let's see if I can do something about that. Here we go. 1979, to me, it, it appears Clemens, Rizzo or Russo, Jenning, but I, and I've tried various uh, yeah. searches of, uh, send me a, of send me a and, photo and of it, but I would like you to, I would like you to actually try to write it, try to copy it. Okay. And, and you'll see the strokes and you'll do better. Value on the piece is going to be in the 150 to 250 range. It's very nice, uh, but not much more than that. In terms of it, it's based on actual sales records. Let's do a little bit more research on the artist and see whether or not uh, we've got something even more special than that. I would be very surprised if it's worth more than $250. Okay, hey, my question that. of the day is cranberry sauce or jelly in Orange, Connecticut? Well, I would say I like it chutney style. Okay, so more of the sauce with something with sort of the, the cranberries in it, right? Yes, ma'am. Nice to see you. Thank you so much. Nice piece. And uh, the, the things that I want you to learn is how to recognize a good lithograph, because a lot of you are looking at prints. Now, I do a lot of videos on prints that you should be watching. Where can you watch them? With the binge link. That's right. The binge link allows you to see all of my videos, even those that are not premiered here, right? At drlaurieV.com. Go to the specials and shop page. Scroll down. There's a big red binge link button. Click on that, save that link, and use it. It will actually organize every single one of my videos. So you're saying, I saw all your videos. No, you didn't. So I want you to use the binge link. It will help you. The, what I was saying about prints is when it comes to lithography, there's a lot of information about what's a good lithograph and what's a not so good lithograph. Because lithography, of course, is introduced in the late 19th century, and it continues to be the premier and easy mechanical printing type of, of course, the 20th century. The piece that she had there from the late, from the 1970s was in fact a, an artist lithograph, which was done by hand by an artist, which is why the value is a little bit higher. So uh, nice piece, very good. You thrifters are out there, you treasure hunters are out there and that's great. Thank you for supporting the channel. I appreciate that always. I'm Dr. Lori, this is Ask Dr. Lori Live. When was the first spring ring clasp used on jewelry? How can you tell an older one from a newer one? Thank you. Well, Cindy, you know, spring ring clasps go all the way back, actually, to the early part of the 1920s. We found even some in the Edwardian era. However, most of the ones you're going to see are going to be mid to late 20th century. And oftentimes what you'll see is you will see the way in which the clasp actually works is going to be uh, whether or not you can tell older or newer. Condition will be one of the other factors and also materials that are used. So if you have one and you can't tell, send me a picture. You can do that at drlaurieV.com. On the website, just click find values and then it says send a photo. You can do that. Is an 18 carat 925 Italy herringbone gold necklace valuable? Definitely, because many Italian necklaces are actually sterling silver, 925, right? Or 92.5% pure silver with gold on top of it, right? So with 18 karat gold overlaid on top of the sterling silver. That's very common. Oftentimes those are of course Italian pieces and they'll be marked Italy, 925 and 18K. So don't get confused. It just means that the, the base of the metal, the base of the piece, maybe it's a necklace is sterling silver. And then of course the 18 karat gold on top. You know, oftentimes that is a very nice piece and oftentimes pretty expensive too, so. Yeah, good question. Thanks for your good questions. And of course, your super chats and super stickers as well. I love to see all of you. I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. It's good to be with all of you. Let's see. Let's see what this, um, well, I need to see your face. There you go. Let's see what this um, piece is. It looks like it is a figurine of some sort. Is this Debbie from Ohio? Yes, ma'am. Hi, Debbie. Debbie, you're in many of my public events all over the country. Hey, you're in your bathroom. Is that where the I'm, best light is? I'm hiding from people. Oh, you're hiding from people. Well, that's good. I know how that is. Hide. Sometimes, right? people, are, sometimes people are in the bathroom because the light is good. It is good in here, too. It is. I don't like the light in my bathroom. My personal bathroom in my house, you know, in my house is so bright. I'm like, oh, I got to look at every pore and every wrinkle and it's not good. I don't like it. So I took out two of the bulbs and replaced them with ones that were burnt out. So <laughs> That's funny. What have you got here, hon? She is a um, wing, W-I-E-N, I think, is a mark. 
Okay, can you hold it back a little? Because I can't see all of it. It looks like it's, a, okay. So it's an Art Nouveau style image, right? A figure, uh, applied ornament onto a vase. Right? Yes. That's nice. So can we see the back, but move it carefully and slowly so you don't drop it? Because the way you're holding it, you're making me nervous. <laughs> Okay, I like the. I thought I would see something a little more dramatic on the back, but all right. And then the bottom has a mark. You said, yes. And you it, looked it, it up. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. So you know it's porcelain before anything even happens. So you, she's coming through, and you know, see that nice bright white clay porcelain. That's nice. Can I see the form, the figure? Okay, she's nicely done too. And of course, you know, sort of eating sort of eating the grapes, right? Almost sort of like a Bacchus figure, you know, the god of, of wine, for example, sort of like that. How much did you pay for it? Where did you get it? $4.99 at Goodwill. Wow, that's great. That's great. So you know what it is, right? You know that it's early 20th century and you know that it's lovely porcelain. It's applied ornament, all sculpture too. And Jennifer says she loves that piece. Value on that piece, just about $275. Nice. <laughs> Nice. Thank you. For, for your investment, that was very, very good. I like it. I they like it. just brought it out. I'm like, oh, mine. <laughs> and you paid you paid how much total? Uh, with tax, a little over $5. Wow. Gosh, that's beautiful. So. 275 It's very good. People are saying, nobody wants vases. Nobody wants figurines. Nobody wants this. I don't know where you guys are selling stuff because people are buying that stuff and they're buying it well, especially online. And oftentimes also in private exchanges too. There's a lot of private exchanges going on. Remember, my analysis is of the whole market. Speaking of whole things, do you like cranberry with the whole cranberries in it, like the sauce, or do you like the jelly? It comes out of a can and you cut it. I like the jelly. I like the jelly too. It's a little old fashioned, but we it's old school, but I like the jelly. Nice yeah, to see I you, Deb. That. Say nice. hi to Eric. <laughs> Eric is in there watching TV, and I will definitely tell him you said hi. Okay, okay, you do that. <laughs> All, All right. right. He's probably Bye. watching me on TV. <laughs> anyway, it's nice to see her, too. And lots of you, of course, who have followed me for years and years, of course, continue to follow me here, and I love that, and I appreciate it as well. Uh, let's see. What is the maker's name of the pottery pitcher, 12 inches higher, with the X indebtedness in the bottom of the picture. Well, I got to tell you, scratching. I hope you're you're getting lotto tickets and winning for the pet rescues. I love I love the animals, but I will say you need to give me a picture, a photo, and the reason for that is because while your description you may think is great, but not a great description. So I've got to take a look at that it, the mark as well as the object. It's not only the mark. I've got to see the object to make sure it's not a fake because there's lots of marks that are pseudo marks. Pseudo meaning fake, right? Uh, even hallmarks on silver that are fake marks for a piece. So I need to see the piece as well as the mark. I'll help you. You know where to go, drlaurieV.com. And then just click on find values and send me a photo. I'll review all of them with my eyes. Me, I review them. That's who reviews all of those things you submit. And if it's not worth the cost of the appraisal, I will tell you that for free. And there are no other appraisers here doing it. It's just me. So if you see, if you think you see me with others, it's not me. Oh, we got the lights on. Let's see what that is. Let's see what that um, that piece of uh, that necklace is. All right, there you go. Hi, hey. how are you? Hi, hey, Dr. Lori. Dr. Lori. Okay, good. Nice to see you. Remind me of your names, Heather and Steve. 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 Okay, yes. I was close. We're you somewhere were. in the yeah. we're somewhere in the Midwest. <laughs> yes. Yes. Wisconsin. Right. Have, you, have you been busy thrifting today? Uh, not today, but this week we were. Yeah. So. Okay. Last week you were. Okay. What did you find here? Um, I think it might be coral. Okay. Um, but I'm not sure. Maybe. Why are you? Out. Why are you not sure? Um, I was looking at different types of coral. Were you looking I, at photos online of different kinds? Yeah, of coral? photos online, but I'm never sh completely sure. That piece isn't. Is that piece is not coral. That okay. piece is trying to look like coral, and here are some of the things you should look for. First of all, okay. you'll notice that the pieces are relatively uniform in size, okay? That's one mm -hmm. thing. The other thing is you're seeing different colors, and you're seeing sort of the sheen on it indicates that those pieces have been dipped in something. Oftentimes, okay. it's sort of like a lacquer type of thing, so that's typically not what we see with coral, right? Coral okay. oftentimes has a different color, so the color is just a bit off. Uh, the other thing that's difficult is when you're trying to compare things like natural developed 
um, natural materials like coral or even stones and you're looking at an image online, it's hard to tell a photograph. I'm trying to teach you guys about how you can do that by photographs. It's taken me many, many years, of course, of expertise in looking at photographs to be able to identify such things. So no, it is not coral. Now, are the little yeah. tiny separator beads in between, are they silver color? Uh, they're turquoise. They're turquoise. They're color. turquoise color. Okay. Now you can see that they're turquoise now. Great. Okay. So I would say that those pieces do not look like red. That Those big pieces don't look like red coral. And the smaller pieces, can I see the clasp? Uh, yes. The smaller pieces also look like they are, yeah, the smaller pieces are actually faux turquoise too. So you have a costume mm -hmm. jewelry necklace, but it's a statement okay. necklace. It's nice. Yeah. How did you acquire it? Where did you get it? Um, we got it at the Salvation Army for about a dollar. A dollar. A dollar. Yeah. dollar. I would say that value on it is just about $50, but it makes a nice statement, right? right? And I would say that the piece dates probably to the 1970s, trying to look like a piece that is, in fact, red coral with turquoise of, of course, the Southwestern style. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Right. Thank you. My pleasure, guys. Nice to see you guys. Hey, my nice question of the day is about cranberry. Do you like the sauce with some cranberries in it, or do you like the jelly that comes out of the can? No jelly. You got it. Just, just the sauce. <laughs> just the sauce. No jelly. Okay. Nice to see you. Thanks for being with me. Thanks to my guests. Thanks for all of you for watching and supporting the channel. I'll show you what to look for always. I'm Dr. Lori. I'll see you next time.